Guess what, guys? Cows on Beauvais are dying. Well, we all warned that it wouldn't end well and it seems like the conspiracy theorists might be right again. You will remember the story that brought Beauvais into focus in the UK. We discovered that farms in the UK were using Beauvais without our knowledge and that they had no obligation to label milk or any other product that had come from a cow being fed this additive. Not much has changed though, I'm afraid, and I will go back to those trial for a recap just now. But first, let's remind ourselves exactly what Bovar is. Bovar, Bovar. Bovar is a feed additive developed by DSM Fermanish, aimed at reducing methane emissions and from ruminants, especially cows. The active ingredient is 3 nitrooxypropanolol or 3 NOP. It's a synthetic compound that is not normally found in a cow's stomach, the rumen. It works by inhibiting an enzyme in the rumen, microbial fermentation process, that produces less methane as a result. So that instead of cows exhaling or burping out methane, the carbon and hydrogen are redirected into other compounds, reducing methane per cow. In layman's terms, it interferes with a complex and natural ruminating process in cow's stomach to change the natural production of methane that cows burp and breathe out. The safety studies say that it is in trace amounts in milk and below acceptable levels. But I would point out that many things in the UK are below the acceptable level, but higher than acceptable levels in other countries for health. So it really depends on what that level is, who sets it and who is involved in the setting of it. If you or I were to eat or inhale concentrated 3-NOP, it can cause burning of the mouth, this 3-NOP additive by the way, it will cause burning of the mouth, throat and stomach, nausea, vomiting, diarrhoea and dizziness from the nitrate-like effect on blood pressure. It might cause mild methomyoglobinemia, your blood can't carry oxygen efficiently if taken in large amounts. Animal studies show that liver enzyme elevation and oxidative stress of the liver at higher doses. It's an irritant to eyes, skin, lungs in powder form. The people working with Bova wear protective clothing because if it touches their skin or gets in their eyes, it's a problem. So based on the chemistry and animal data, deliberate ingestion would absolutely warrant emergency medical evaluation and supportive treatment. Notwithstanding this, it is approved in several markets, including the EU and the UK for use in cattle feed. Regulatory assessments by the FSA found no safety concerns whatsoever when Bovar is used at the approved dose for animals or consumers. So what's going on in Denmark? Well, in Denmark, it is now a legal requirement for all cows to be fed certain amounts of this stuff to reduce emissions. The Danish Dairy Farmers Association have received direct contact from 30 to 40 farmers claiming problems. There are emerging reports from these farmers that suggest a possible link between the feed additive Bovair and health problems in cows, and I can't say I'm surprised. Now, just a month after farmers complied with their new law, some say that after introducing Bovair to their herds, they've seen cows become ill or underperform. They've reduced appetite, lower milk yields, lethargy, digestive issues, fever, and in some cases cows have died or needed to be cold. The manufacturer maintains that the additive is safe and says that to date they have not identified Bovet as a confirmed cause of any reported health problems in cows. The Danish Food and Veterinary Administration, however, has acknowledged reports and has asked scientists at Aarhus University to study the issue. They would not do this without reason. So what do we know? We know that Bovair is authorised and approved under regulatory regimes. Safety assessments by manufacturers claim no significant issues at approved doses. We know the Danish policy imposition has brought the additive into wider use in the country and they're in a transitional period. We know that there are multiple farmer reports of health problems in cattle coincident with the introduction of Bovair. Investigations have been launched, which is a positive step for transparency and animal welfare, and it means that there is a signal of a problem. What we don't yet know is we don't have a scientifically peer-reviewed study that's publicly available that establishes causation between bovair use and the reported illness or death of cows. We don't know whether the reported issues are due to the additive itself, incorrect dosing, variation in feed, housing management, or interaction with other dietary changes, 
or other concurrent health issues in the herd. We don't know the scale of the problem, the number of cows, the number of herds, the rate of incidence versus total herds used in bovaire has not been clearly documented or in the public domain. For instance, 30 to 40 farmers report problems, but how does that compare with the 1400 herds in Denmark using bovaire? We don't know the long-term impacts on animal health, product, milk yield, safety, environmental trade-offs on methane reduction. So whilst we see this unfolding in Denmark that has gone full on bovair, what is the situation in the UK? Well, as before, it's also hard to know because the farms using and the milk manufacturers selling the products from those farms don't have to tell us if the cows from where the products come from have been fed bovar. So the limited information that we do have is that Grosvenor Farms is using it in a trial that we know about 400 cows three to four months and we don't know how the additive will be used on a full com commercial rollout there is an arla trial in larger scope 30 farms or thereabouts but no public information about how many cows what farms what duration etc since the additive is part of a sustainability strategy of methane reduction rather than just purely animal or human health from a management diet composition feed mixing and herd we don't know how that will influence the outcomes of the trial how it will be judged which in my opinion is a biased approach and it will skew analysis of results because climate is the new religion we don't know retailers involved in the trial and whether they will explicitly label their products with bovar the fsa states that these additives do not need to be labeled on food products i mean what the actual as a consumer don't we have the right to know well the only way in the uk that you can avoid it is by buying organic at the moment because it cannot be used in organic production but in denmark that is different in denmark it can in fact, it must be used in organic production. So in the UK, outside of buying organic, you could buy from a local farm and ask them first, are you using bovar? So to summarise, we have signals from Denmark that the additive is affecting cows and that it may be linked to reduced milk production through to death. But even if it's just reduced milk production, it's changing something in cows that doesn't need changing. And if there are health effects, we may not see those changes for years when it will be too late. The additives in our day to day food are already killing us, but they are legal, guys, and we are eating them. Why, oh, why do we always have to interfere with nature and try and alter another part of it? It is most often damaging to all involved. A cow's stomach is complex. It allows it to digest in a way that we can't, and it is interfering with that at our peril. So let's go back to the way that nature intended and stop fixing things that are not broken. I don't want to be ingesting chemicals that I can avoid, and I would suggest that you don't either. So what to do? First of all, take it seriously, guys. Don't rely on the government or the manufacturers to act in your best interest because they don't and they won't. That's not going to change. They're making money. Buy organic in the UK, although in Denmark it's too late. Keep your ear to the ground for any changes to this and for more information. Say no to being part of this Frankenstein horror show. It is, of course, a Frankenstein horror show. They are changing a natural process in one of our animals. Take these reports seriously. They will be dismissed as anecdotal with no scientific peer-reviewed study confirming the causal link between bovar and cow in, in, in so This is true for now, for now. The manufacturer, of course, states that early research did not find evidence of disease in cows using bovair under controlled conditions. I don't want to be ingesting these chemicals and farms don't work under controlled conditions. Cows wander in fields and they can't when they're being fed on bovair. So that's the difference that the manufacturers didn't have in their lab experiment. Things don't work out in the field in the same way that they do in a laboratory. What can I say? I think we should always take people on the ground, i.e. farmers, seriously. They want an easy life. They don't want to be seeing their cows affected by these additives and these chemicals. They would do this if it wasn't causing them problems. It is causing them problems. It is being taken seriously in Denmark. They have asked 
the university to investigate. Take it seriously, say no. And at the moment in the UK, the way that you can say no is by buying organic or going to your local farmer and, small, and supporting small businesses. So I am doing that, guys. I actually have my milk delivered every day, but not everybody can do that. But just do every little bit that you can. Stay alert. Try and be as natural as you can and say no to these interventions over which we have no say. I will keep my ear to the ground for you and for me, and I will update you when I get more information. Take care, everybody. Be safe. Eat natural.